So today we're going to test out my Commodore 128. This is my new built Commodore 128 based on a C128 Neo Rev 3.3 board. And uh, in my previous videos, you will see that I tested it in uh, 40 column mode. But what I have to here today is a um, converter board that will go from the 80 column mode on the Commodore 128 to um, an SCART or SCART cable. And that goes into this converter, which then converts it to HDMI, which I will then be able to display on my standard HDMI LCD screen. So this board, I bought it online and um, it's specifically built for the Commodore 128, and um, it has a switch here, which converts between 80 column and 40 column mode. And then it has another switch down here on the board that lets you select between composite or uh, S-video. So let's go ahead and um, get this connected and uh, test it out. Now, I've, I've never tested the, the VDC or the 80 column mode on this Commodore 128. It's a brand new hand-built Commodore 128 that I built a few months ago. So I'm excited to get this connected up and uh, see how it works. So I now have um, the computer hooked up um, to this uh, video converter via the um, 80 column output converter board. So it's going 80 column output to the SCART cable into the input on this device and then out to um, HDMI to directly to my monitor. Now I noticed when I plug this in, um, it started getting video from this unit that told it the mode, the resolution. So I'm going to change it to uh, 1080 mode. That's 720p, there's 1080, and then I'm going to leave it on PAL mode. So I have my 4080 column display button on on the Commodore 128, and I have the selector on the, the converter board on the back of the 128 selected to 80 columns. So let's go ahead and power this up and see if it works. And there it is. Let's try different colors. Now, I don't know if you can see this. But it's fairly sharp. Um, I re remember the video on my... Uh, monitor it back in the 1980s being somewhat sharper but it does a pretty good job the colors are, are vibrant they're not washed out like a lot of the conversion boards i've seen before so and i just realized this is running on my my new um c128 neo so this is validation that the 80 column mode works um, let's see if I can load some 80 column programs and uh, do some actual testing of, of some software. So I'm going to try loading software from my uh, BackBit cartridge here. Um, I know that BackBit has some limited Commodore 128 support. I do not know if BackBit will work um, with 80 column mode. So let's go ahead and give it a try and uh, see what happens. Okay, it appears that um, that the back bit cartridge works in 80 column mode. It's, I know I have some 80 column programs um, on here in D64 format. I don't know if these are going to work, but um, we'll give it a try. Hmm. 
Hmm. That did not appear to work. Let's check 40 column mode. Oh, well that's interesting. Not sure what's going on here. So it looks like it, it the back bit booted over into Commodore 64 mode. I wonder if there's a setting in the back bit um, that controls which mode it boots into. So I'm going to check that, and um, then I'll I'll restart the video. So after uh, attempting to load um, some of these 80 column programs, Commodore 128 80 column programs on the back bit, uh, I couldn't get it to work. I'm not sure if there's an incompatibility with the back bit and these specific. Commodore 128 programs, or um, what the deal is there. So I decided to actually do it the old-fashioned way and burn some of these programs to floppy. So I, I dusted off the old uh, trusty 1571 floppy drive, and um, I'm going to use the the burn functionality in uh, the back bit. And hopefully there's we don't run into any kind of... Uh, compatibility issues here, but I'm going to burn several of these programs to the 1571 to, to, to floppy, and uh, we'll see if uh, we can get some of these to work. That's interesting. Oh, okay, so it boots, looks like a cartridge program into a 40 column mode, so then we'll to the 1571. So it looks like you know not all the sectors on the disk are, are used so um, we'll burn these sectors and um, I'll probably do this to uh, several different programs for testing purposes and uh, when that's done I will uh, continue this video. Okay, so I have three floppy disks that are uh, have been written to with uh, 80 column Commodore 128 programs. So let's go ahead and uh, give this a try. I noticed um, that uh, even after writing those disks, um, on my 1571 disk drive, um, the, the operating system would not read the floppy disk in, the, in either um, Commodore 64 mode or Commodore 128 mode. So, uh, I, I hooked up my um, diagnostic harness and um, it came back that um, U4, the 6526 U uh, CIA chip, uh, was testing as bad. So what I did was I used a another um, 6526 that is suspect, um, but it was actually getting to the point where it was still being marked as bad in the C128 diagnostic, but um, it seemed to pass most of the tests um, w with the, the original 6526 chip that I had, had in here. It wouldn't even um, test, it would just skip the, the RAM tests. So what I'm going to do is um, swap out this slightly suspect chip for one that is um, one that's uh, actually off of another working C128. So we will uh, put this chip in here and uh, see if that resolves it. So just make sure it's keyed the right direction. And now that's pressed in, and um, so we'll fire up the diagnostic test and see if that that fixes our problem. So it's testing, and that's a good sign. So I, I, I really like the uh, di diagnostic features of the, the back bit cartridge. It has um, both the Commodore 64 
basic diagnostic test, um, the full di diagnostic test that, that works with the, the harnesses, and uh, also a Commodore 128, 128D diagnostic test. It's uh, really easy to, to switch between diagnostic modes on this cartridge. Now, I, I do have another diagnostic cartridge. Um, it's based on the Versa 64 cart, um, but it's, it's I, I always need to uh, remember the, the dip setting positions um, to select the correct cartridge. The back bit, it's really easy. You just hold down the, the reset button and then uh, you press once to, uh, to enter the basic uh, diagnostic mode twice to enter the Commodore 64 full diagnostic mode or um, three times to enter the, the 128 di diagnostic mode. So I'll let this uh, diagnostic run and uh, see if anything comes back as uh, suspect. So the C128 diagnostic cartridge is still um, detecting U4, uh, the 6526 uh, CIA, as bad. However, it's, it's able to get through um, a full set of RAM tests. It still says that the, the serial port is bad. Um, I'm not sure if uh, that's correct or not, or if some kind of false positive, or if it's just something uh, on the back bit cartridge here. But um, I'm going to go ahead and stop this and um, and try hooking up the disk drive to see if we can load the program now with the, the replaced um, CIA chip. After uh, several red herrings, I think I've figured out what the issue may have been. So let's um, go ahead and boot this up and uh, continue troubleshooting our, or at least uh, demoing the uh, 80 column uh, adapter for the Commodore 128. All right, so disk drive is actually seems to be responding. So let's go ahead and um, load this up. This should be a um, 80 column program. So we should see what happens. I've never run this program before. So let's see if it works in 80 column mode. So while Initially, I thought it was um, the 7406 chip, uh, U30, and um, it turns out that um, the serial port connector on the motherboard, the center pen, or one of the pens labeled ATN, was not uh, soldered in correctly, so that was getting me giving me some uh, inconsistent results with testing because Sometimes I connected up and it work, and sometimes I, I wouldn't. It wouldn't, and then uh, after I replaced the 7406 chip, I noticed the same issue. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. It really had to do with the position of the the connector and the cable. If I applied downward force to the connector, um, the serial port worked. So hopefully that um, resolves the issue. So let's go ahead and run this program and see if it functions in 80 column mode. And it does. All right. Um, not sure. This is the NTSC C128 VDC native version. Night's lore. Let's go ahead and start the game. It's not bad for 80 columns. And now I need a joystick. Over here. Joystick plugged in. It says port two. Oh, there's actually some sound. Sounds kind of weird. Let's do the game speed test to see what happens. Game speed full, slowest, slow, normal. Fast, full. Uh, let's start out with normal. Let's 
Not bad. For speed. I don't know what uh, fast looks like. I don't know any of the controls of this this game, but looks pretty good for a 80 column. Oh, oh I see. There's a, a moon, so it turned into something else. It is monochrome, though. It's pretty impressive for uh, the 80 column chip not being a, a graphics chip or having sprites. Okay, so so that works. Um, you know, one of the, I don't know if this is a, a eighty column game that requires program that requires the sixty four k of of RAM, um, but one of the things I wanted to do is I, I did put sixty four k of RAM in this Commodore one twenty eight, so I wanted to to run. There's a program you can run that will will test whether or not you have sixty four k of RAM. So let's go ahead and uh, shut out of this and go run that program. So let's go ahead and run this. Okay, it says um, a C64 with an 8502 with 64K of RAM, which makes sense because uh, it does appear that it moved into a 64, C64 mode. Uh, NTSC, which I do have an NTSC chip on this system, in the system. CPU speed is set to 0.96 megahertz. And then um, it detected VTC with 64K. So I'm not sure how, I, I didn't realize that uh, you could access um, the VTC RAM from um, directly from C64 mode. So just to recap, um, this is the uh, 80 column adapter for a Commodore 128 that I purchased from uh, Sven Pook um, and it seems to work great um, and then this also will uh, you know it has a nice switcher between the, the 40 column standard 40 column mode and the 80 column mode it also has a switcher um, to uh, switch between uh, composite and S video and then uh, when you, uh, in order to convert it from the SCART output to HDMI, uh, you can use one of these commonly available um, SCART to HDMI converters that are available on the usual places online. So yeah, this is a nice little system. This actually works um, a lot better than the previous um, system that I used for connecting to HDMI or to 80 column too. And that was uh, this uh, GG Labs converter. Um, and I don't think necessarily this was the problem. Um, somebody was telling me online that you can actually get um, SCART off of here and run it through a SCART connector. Uh, I haven't looked into that yet, uh, but it looks like uh, there's some some pins that you can solder on on this board. Um, so, so that could be a possibility. And then that's used um, this will convert from the the RGP RGPI output of the Commodore 128 to a CGA signal and then um, that signal is fed into uh, one of these boards these are uh, imported from China and um, these will convert the, the CGA output to uh, to video or VGA video output so I, I did try this board um, before, and um, the the 80 column output was very blurry, and the colors were were off. Um, there were colors that were washed out, and colors other colors that were too dark, like I think like the dark gray, that were were too dark to actually see. Um, so if you have this setup, um, this this works okay. But um, I I really like this converter. I like the quality and the colors of this converter much better.